Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna show how to hide your GitHub email or at least have your email be associated with your account, but still be somewhat private. Uh, let's jump into it. I'm also gonna show you how to get the email for bots, which might be useful as well if you need to make commits that you know, pretend to be GitHub actions, for example. Uh, I'm gonna be using a throwaway private repo to demo this today. Uh, and I'm also gonna go through a little bit of settings and show you some of the API. Uh, so let's start with kind of the default behavior that's going to happen here. Let me clone this repo, throw away, uh, get commit, allow empty, some commit message. So by default, when you make a commit, it's going to use whatever you have configured in your uh, Git configuration. Usually globally, you will have configured a, uh, a name and an email. I use a public email that I actually monitor because sometimes it's useful for people to contact me from this. But you probably want to hide this if you don't want people contacting you. Uh, and this will be shown directly in your commit. So if we do git show format equals percent AE, author email, uh, you can also use CE for committer email. You can see that my email address is shown directly in here. Now there's actually an option on GitHub if we go to uh, settings and look at emails. This will, uh, the emails that are listed here will be associated with your account. So if I were to push this commit, uh, let's actually rename the branch domain because I haven't, I'm on a too old version of Git that doesn't understand the new branch naming. Uh, and if we push this now, you'll see on here that this commit is associated with my account. It has my you know, user ID, and that's done entirely by matching the email with whatever you have set in your email settings. You can actually add a bunch of emails here. I used to have my old work emails because sometimes I had commits from those. Uh, I've since deleted them, so my old work commits are no longer associated with my account. Oh no. Um, but this is how GitHub figures out how you associate emails. You can actually remove your primary email here and change it to a forced other email by clicking this keep my email address private option. Uh, when this is set, Git will prevent you from pushing new commits that use an email that are not this, or that's not this. Uh, and this is a special email address that GitHub has reserved as sort of like a, a placeholder email so that you can hide that. Now, if you want to set this up for your local machine, you can copy this email. I often forget this email, so I'm going to show you how to generate it later. Uh, but if you copy this email and you do git config dash dash global uh, user dot email and then this value, that will set the email to this such that any future commit will have this in it. And if we look in our git config here, uh, don't want to show that file, that's got some creds in it. Uh, if we look at git config here, you'll see that it's changed the value here. And if we make another commit um, here, and now we show the email address from here, you'll see that it is now this other email. And let's push that up just to show that it's still associated with my account. Go to uh, commits here. And you'll see that both of these are associated with my account. And actually, if you open up the individual commit here, there's a little cheat that you can do here. You can put patch on the end of this URL and Git will show you, or maybe it's diff. This is diff. Uh, oh, it's a private commit. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Let me make this repository public so I can show you this neat little thing. Uh, change visibility, make public. Now people are going to see this on my GitHub timeline. Oh no! I'm going to tap my security key. Going through all the motions here. Okay, so now, why isn't it working? What? Usually, oh, because it's an empty patch. Oh, right. So probably uh, I have to actually add some files here. Uh, add T. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes live demos don't go as expected. Okay, now if we look at this commit and add dot diff on the end, you can see that we get a full diff here. And if we do dot patch, it'll actually show you the full email address and other stuff. Similar if you were to email patches, which is what this was originally for. <laughs> of course, we hopefully don't email patches anymore. Okay, so that's that part. I also wanted to show you how you can generate this email address here. The first part of this is actually the user ID of your account. And you can get that nice and easily by going to api.github.com and then typing in whatever user name that you want here. So for instance, you'll see this 1810591. That's my GitHub user ID. And these increment, these increase in time depending on how old your account is. Like if we look for my Azatilly2 account, you'll see it has a much bigger number. 
Now you can also use this to generate email addresses for bots and any GitHub app that's registered on GitHub has an associated user account. Now they're named a little bit differently. So if we do GitHub dash actions, square bracket bot square bracket, this will be the user account for the GitHub actions bot. And you'll see that it has a user ID here and then we can make a commit using that user ID. So if we do user.name GitHub actions dash C user.email and then this number, oops, this number plus GitHub dash actions bracket bot at, was it users dot no reply? <laughs> Forget already. Users dot no reply dot GitHub dot com. Uh, git commit allow, oops, how we already have Git in front of it. Commit allow empty dash m some message. This will make a, Missing value, oh, right, we need an equals here. Uh, this will make a commit as the GitHub Actions bot. Uh, git push margin head. And so now if we were to look at the commit history here, you'll see that we, we've made a commit as a bot. And this might be useful if you're writing your own bot or if you're you know, making an automated commit during GitHub Actions or something like that. Uh, and that's how you can associate that. And using the API, you can figure out that URL. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to show this. Uh, you might find it useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.